Welcome back to Ian's Chinesium Plastic Pit of Despair channel. I mean, I'm sorry, welcome back. Um, uh, we left you last time, you know where we were. Go back and watch that video if you haven't. I started dry fitting um, this, this behemoth of a leg slash, you know, engine nacelle, I guess. I don't know. Never tried figuring out the technical jargon for Macross. Um, these pieces, uh, these fit together pretty well. I mean, again, you know, we're, we're not at those uh, Japanese standards. Um, they fit together okay. Uh, the little jet nozzle for the back of it, that fits okay. Uh, the intake uh, part, that fits okay. These frickin' ah, hate them. These feet, just whatever, you know, the, 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 the jet, the, the nozzle, slash foot, whatever. These things are so crooked, and you make that crooked, that's straight, and then it knocks this one out, and then you get that one straight, because, you know, the little toesies are supposed to line up, like, perfectly. They're warped. They're just, they're just slightly warped. This is going to be a mild nightmare. On top of the fact that, um, one of the, oh, come on, Anyone building this, there's a little notch in here for to which this fits into. That notch wasn't opened up. I had to cut that out myself. It was like, why is it not going in? It goes in now. So, uh, yeah, beware. There's that. Look at these boogers where the injection pins were. Ugh. Goopy. Nasty. Feels a little greasy. There's a few of them in here. As if you, this one didn't take a dump in my model kit. Ugh, I don't want to. Whatever, I wouldn't want to work at the factory where they injection mold in this thing. So, I'm gonna do what I can to get these frickin' things to fit together. Uh, it's gonna be, yeah, rubber bands and thin cement, and just keep working my way down until they line up. But yeah, that, that's where we're at right now. I mean, without heating these up with like a heat gun or a hair dryer and trying to like mush them back into place, you know? Ugh. All right, well, uh, uh, back to work for me. Oh, I hit the camera. Oh, my head. Just kidding. It shouldn't come down to this. Yes, the vice grips are in use again. Okay, so I got that lined up little quick setting extra thin this is your friend here got that one lined up then the rear was completely out of whack none of this stuff lined up in the back um yeah they're just there's they're big parts i think the i know tamiya or bandai or hasaga or whatever i think the big boys in japan would do a much better job at molding such large parts. i know they have to do a better job at molding large parts like other companies do a great job of molding. Takam made some gigantic battleship turrets. Those are huge pieces also, but yeah, it's like some way they cooled at a funny rate or something, or the way the plastic was injected, the temperatures involved. The I don't know what's in... I, I'm not an injection molding engineer, but it just... They just warped for whatever reason. Other people out there possibly watching this video... Um, if I'm lucky enough, we'll know the reason why these parts get all warped up. Um, but yeah, here's, this is, yeah, that's where we are. This took, uh, the better part of about, uh, uh, 30 minutes of fiddling to get this one thing. It is now late in the day, and I must go to brew at the zoo. At the Atlanta Zoo, we've been kindly invited, um, by our neighbor to, uh, go to that. So... We're going to leave this piece to dry fully. This quick setting, it sets quick, but it still allows parts to kind of move around for a while. Um, you know, the regular extra thin doesn't set as quick, but it sets harder when it does set. Like, it's a full set once it sets. This, it sets really quick, but if you're just, like, placing little bits and pieces that fit perfectly... I mean, it's made by Tamiya. They assume you're building a model kit that fits together perfectly. So, haha, 
Yeah, ironic. Um, but yeah, it's still, uh, eh, whatever, you know, the reason for the vice grips. And these things have so much flex in them that they're forcing their way back out of alignment, even though the glue is mostly set. So, um, I'm not going to bore you with the other nozzle. Now, the figuring out how to paint this thing, because you really got to put these parts in here um, first before you can paint this big behemoth. Um, so... I may have to break out the masking tape. I may go ahead and uh, pre-paint. Now this this front this front thing we can get in. No, don't. Here, let's pretend it's glued together. This front thing we could we could get it in there. Um, bear with me. Ah, uh, I just did the. There we go. Um, can it? Can it? There we go. Um, this'll come in and go out, um, after this thing's together. Oh, for Pete's sake. There it is. Um, because, look at this. I mean, this, okay, it's not a perfect fit on these two halves. But, yeah, they're not perfect. So I'm probably going to want to glue this all up together before I paint it, because the glue will just ruin the paint. So what I may need to do is paint all of these dark parts for this section, uh, paint them all, and then mask everything. And uh, that's never really that fun. But we've got plenty of masking tape. What is this? Kamoe tape! This is the Tamiya tape. we got plenty of more tape. So we'll probably have to pre-assemble this mostly. And... Uh, and paint it as a whole, like, you know, paint all these with... I guess I better figure out what color I'm painting these suckers. Is it not gray-green? Navy blue? Uh, that's not navy blue. We got some gray. The dark iron? No, I don't know. I gotta figure out my paint colors. Um, because I'm def... Looks like I'm gonna start painting some things beforehand. Uh, a little update on the last parts. I uh, got these two. These needed a hell of a lot of sanding. That seam was just kind of nasty and gnarly. Um, but yeah, those needed a lot of sanding after they went together to get a nice smooth edge. Um, our space rocket cannon schlong, a lot of sanding. Lots of sanding. I'm not too worried about the bottom because it's going to be under the plane. Um, or a little void filled with Tamiya putty. Uh, and then just tons of sanding. I had to clean all the extra sanding dust off. I, I wipe everything down with uh, isopropyl alcohol before I go to prime or paint anything. So that'll that'll all get pretty much wiped out. But yeah, uh, very few parts, very hard to put together. Uh, there we go, another theme of this model. I don't care. It's gonna be awesome when it's done. Just awesome. We're gonna... Oh, it's gonna be sight to behold. I'm gonna have to cool... I don't know, come up with a better... Uh, then I'll go back to the truck bed, I guess. This is the only place big enough to film this thing once it's completed. Um, sorry about the huge mess on the workbench. It's just chaos down here now. Um, okay. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, this isn't the end of the episode, but I'll be back after uh, we figure something out with these legs. All right. Later. Okay, well, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to this kit. Uh, you remember my, my bitching and moaning about putting together this thing? It was completely out of whack. I mean, whatever. Big pain in the head. It even needed a little bit of filler. Um, this one? No drama. Basically, went together perfectly, perfectly fine. I mean, glued, you know, had to, you know, you know, fiddle and glue it a little bit. It was so much easier. And they're on the same damn parts tree. So, beware. Also... I, you know, I kept I kept making a mistake of, of putting this away every time I used it. Not for the rest of this build. That stuff's staying here. We started putting together a, a fast pack. Um, picking out... I spent most of the day just... Just OCD... Uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Decision paralysis? Something like that. Trying to figure out paint colors. I've pretty much got it down. I did some test shots here. Um, so... That's going to be the fast pack color, and that's the uh, Tamiya Field Blue. Uh, it, it's pretty. I, I, I hit this with 1500 grit to dull it out, so I can get a pretty. It's pretty close. It's a little more realistic. This is a little too green. 
I mean, an anime, eh, I want to be close, but eh, this is fine. We're going to do that. Then we got this, this, uh, uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous Navy Blue that I think will look great on everything else for the most part. Um, and then for nozzles and whatnot, I just hit this with flat clear. It's not quite dry yet. But we're going to do this um, burnt iron for all the nozzles. That looks slick. It's, it's metallic without having noticeable metal flake in it, which is quite nice. This is my first... These are my first Mr. Hobby paints I've ever bought. These are great. I mean, well, I lie. I think I lie. Is this GSI Krios? Yeah, this is the same company. This is Mr. Hobby. These are just Gundam markers. Um, so we've got our paint colors pretty much picked out. I've got some other things. Got a gray violet. And then, what do I got here? Gray green. Burnt iron. Neutral gray. I have some other grays. I have a bunch of Tamiya gray. Oh, the Droro paint is, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of paint. Um, we have a, we have a Tamiya neutral gray. I may use that for the gun pod. That might be a nice contrast, or it might be too light. I have a light gray, but that's even lighter. I don't know. Again, uh, too many options. Too many, I have uh, gun metal. I mean, I could just use go, go old school and go gun metal. No, oh, that's metallic gray. Whoops. Um, where is gun metal? Gun metal. Very dark. Um, that actually might be a nice option for the gun pod. Since it's a gun pod, maybe gun metal. Metallic gray is a little, little on the light, lighter side of things. Um, I, ugh, whatever. No one cares. Shut up, Ian. All right. So I've decided I'm going to have to uh, paint these things and shove them in there, mask them off, and, and paint everything, mask off all the parts that aren't supposed to be white, and just paint this thing as an assembled sub-assembly. Um, and then I found out, I was like racking my brain, there's a little clear lens that goes here, and I'm like, oh, what color it's supposed to be? I found out it's supposed to be black with red, red circles in it. Um, and then, and then I test fit, I test fit the fast pack, covers it right up. So, um, I'm gluing everything together. So this fast pack bit's never coming off of here. God, the camera, I need to get it further away again. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's like, you don't need to worry. Like whatever's under here, I don't, when I paint it on the panel lining under there, I just, there we go. Done. Perfect. You know? Um, so yeah, this thing's just freaking huge. I'm still blown away by the sheer size of this thing. That's what she said. Not to me. Um, yeah, so there we are. Okay, eh, more work will happen. See you in a few. Oh, progress on more giant parts. This is impressive. Um... It's impressive the amount of putty that this thing demands. I'm puttying all sorts of voids. Um, not, well, not that many. Nothing lines up perfect. The first time I had to break out my metal, you know, freaking gunsmithing file for plastic model kit. Um, but we got the fast packs here. They're so huge. I, I raised the camera up even higher. Um, it's, they're insane. These are not glued in. These will pop right out for painting. Um, go, oh, good God. I mean, there's decent panel lines on it. Uh, nothing fits together perfectly. A lot of squeak, I mean, a lot of filing and sanding. Um, so yeah, this, this whole thing is, there we go. There's a different part. Those two, there's fillers for these if you're not using fast packs, if you're building the, uh, regular fighter version of this and not the Super Strike. Oh my boy, there we go. Get these guys off the pylons. These are just massive. Look at that. I, I left the, the lens out for the, uh, the gun sight. But yeah, these guys will pop right out. And then, so paint those separate. But I'm going to be doing a lot, of, a lot of inlay painting here to give this some contrast. All these guys... 
uh, the, the tips of the cannons. Those, you know, inside where all of the little tiny thrusters go. Those all need to be... We're going to paint uh, in some order, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll just paint the main color of the fast of the fast packs and then we will then mask around all these little doohickeys and airbrush in the details not too hard to do uh, even for someone as mediocre as I am so yeah these are cool look at that look at this thing massive just ginormous so yeah okay I gotta go up and, and let the puppy out to do his business in the freshly cleaned backyard area it's always right when they clean it I like enjoy it for like a minute nope dogs are pooping and peeing all over it again okay we'll be right back okay uh, I'm gonna stop complaining about this not being a Tamiya Hascot whatever uh, uh, brand brand aside um, nothing it's awesome and nothing freaking fits right okay these wings are you making that out Let's just see here. Um, yeah. Yeah. These things are wavier than the bodywork on the side of a New York City taxi cab. Um, boof. I mean, if you can't see that. I know it's white. It's a little the color of the plastic makes it hard to see. The imperfect. Thank God it makes it hard to see the imperfections. Well, either way, we've got got our wings built. I took the clear lenses and I hit them with just a little silver paint, little to me a chrome silver on the back. I'm not doing lights in this, guys. I I, can't, I don't have it in me. I'm sure there's people that have, and good for them. They already did it. Uh, whatever I did, I saw theirs. Mine wouldn't be as good. Um, so yeah, we got those. We'll just mask these off when we go to paint everything. They had to go in before you could glue the wings together. Um, once the wings are all uh, glued together, by the way, I switched over a while back using uh, Microsmark Same Stuff plastic welder. It's for all plastics. ABS, styrene, uh, you know, polystyrene obviously, and model kit things, Lucite, all that. Um, and uh, it's the same as the orange brand of whatever the hell it is. Plastruct. Plastruct. That glue works just as well. Um, so we got our wings done. Again, our massive, massive fast packs. Um, you know, we've got, we've got other things. It, it's, it's a lot of giant pieces. Um, next on the list here, according to the instructions, is to just put the whole big fat bitch together and you're done. So now, oh, <laughs> I got the extra weapon set. So I got to build those extra big weapons and then we'll get it together. And while I was looking at the weapons, I was like, how the hell did these things mount? There are no holes on the bottom of this wing for the pylons, for the hard points. Nothing. Yeah, you got to drill them out yourself. That's supposed to be a three millimeter hole. I used my pin vise with a, a three millimeter drill bit. It was a tiny bit big, little big. Um, just just the natural wobbliness of the human body trying to drill a little hole. Um, so I ordered a number 32 wire size drill bit. It's just shy by like 30, 40 thou of a three millimeter hole. I know I'm using thous to explain millimeter size, whatever. Um, this whole above angle filming is just weird um so yes yeah, so i ordered that drill bit that'll be here tomorrow from amazon i'm gonna build some weapons uh the big missile pods and the giant missiles i don't know how i want to mount them yet there's a few options for it um i'm gonna get putting those together and then we're gonna just start painting everything finally i'm gonna start getting some nato black on everything and then a little white for highlight and then the color goes on, and that's when the fun begins. All right, BRB. Yeah, I just, I, I just had to come back. And yes, that's my belly sticking out into the camera. I hate this. Oh, I gotta lose weight. Okay, BRB. Whoa. 
Well, you know you're not doing a good job until you don't try to catch nippers if they fall. Trust me. Oh, yeah. That's electrical tape that was holding on a paper towel. We're high-tech first aid down here in the dungeon. So we've got four of these monsters. It's just held on, but four of these guys. And then these are the hard points, or the pylons, for to mount the missiles under the wings. It's gonna, there's two styles to do. I'm gonna do two missiles on a single pylon. You can do each missile directly. And then we've got our mini missile pods. These things are awesome. So we just, yeah, they're just Tic Tacs. Um, yeah, I got more of this boring manual labor to complete. And uh, a huge giant mess everywhere, including some blood. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're there. Oh my god. I mean, the guns are big, the missiles are big, big, huge, massive, uh, June bug, honey boo boo mumps, I don't know, whatever. Um, so yeah, either way, uh, oh boy, all right, it's getting a little late, so I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish these little pylons, and then I think I'm gonna be officially done with component construction and we can start painting. So, yeah, we'll, let's see what happens. All right, BRB. Woo, we're sweating down here. Sweating to the, sweating to the old, well, we're playing older music, so you know, technically. Oh boy, Richard Simmons, don't sue me. All right, we've got all of our fairly large missiles. We've got our mini, mini missile pods. We've got our, what are these, reaction, reaction missiles, reaction rockets, something like that. Um, we got four of these monsters. These two guys, we got all the little tips and things in there. We got the little pylons and all that. My drill bit should be here any minute, any hour now. It's Amazon, who the hell knows when they want to show up. Um, but basically, we're ready to start painting. Um, everything's getting NATO black. We are going to go through a record amount of XF-69 NATO Black on this model. I mean, a record amount. And I build 16th scale tanks usually, so I got a lot of this paint. Um, it's Don't worry about the paint competition. We're not counting how many of these I use. Um, yeah, lots of NATO Black. And then we're gonna do some white highlight areas. And then we'll do the final color and assembly. And it's, this is gonna be a bitch. But it'll all be worth it in the end. I mean, I am numb and sore. It's hard to brush my teeth or shave with how weak my arms are from all the damn sanding I've been doing on this kit. I've never sanded a kit this much in my entire life. So, yes, kind of hot mess to put together, but it's going to look friggin' awesome when we're done, so stay tuned. Okay. <clears throat> Went through uh, one entire large jar of NATO black. Not even half done with the black base coats. But uh, we got to put the uh the feet slash you know main uh 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 nozzles uh yeah exactly into the legs and then mask them off so we could paint them so what we're doing is we're going to do our white pre-shading and i am uh i am not very i kind of follow the whole sort of in the middle splotchy it's just just get a decent amount in there i think i I think I brought a sniper rifle to a rocket launcher fight here because I'm using my Tamiya airbrush. And, uh, yeah. I gotta open up the taps on this. But you don't want it to be perfectly uniform, at least in my opinion. I follow the mediocre, the mediocre style of uh, Andy's Hobby Headquarters. Let's, this has, we have an adjustable throw on the end of this Tamiya airbrush. Basically, it's an Iwata airbrush with a Tamiya badge on it. Um, it was actually a little cheaper than buying the actual Iwata. So yeah, just a little bit of that action. Again, we don't have to be perfect. This is just going to be underneath the paint to make it a little lighter. I've seen some guys paint these Macross models like super splotchy all over. Different style. I haven't seen that before. Equally cool. Do it. Ow. A little close to the edge there, but whatever. 
Um, do it how you want it. It's a little harder painting at this um, angle to be under the camera, but um, I don't like anything else uncomfortable that I don't like. I sort of get used to it and just do it. I'm also married, if that gives a hint to the joke. Let's see here. All right, so we're done. I mean, that's it. It's just do the white in the middle. And then you'll see the fruits of this labor when we put on the uh, the Mr. Hobby navy blue. And, because, uh, I mean, navy blue my left testicle. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of pretty dark gray. So we're going to do that. Um, I'm not going to bore you with any of this. And we will be back with um, what these look like before they're ready for a protective clear coat so that we can mask them up and shove them in the legs and keep painting. BRB. Welcome back to the basement. Okay, uh, so we got everything coated in NATO black. Um, it's my standard operating procedure. And then we're doing our white highlight coat. And, oh my god, I mean, when I do a 16 scale tank or something, it's a lot, it seems a lot easier than this. This friggin' thing has so many panel lines, so you wanna, you wanna get it for each panel line, so you get that lovely dark around the edges effect once she's all painted up. It's a huge pain in the ass. Um, but, yes, like many things in this hobby world, the bigger the pain in the ass, uh, the, the nicer it makes your kit. So that's what we're doing here. I gotta do this wing and this wing, and then the other 16 metric tons of plastic that I coated in NATO black already. So, yeah. Uh, not gonna be a lot of bitching and moaning this time because all I'm doing is painting in this episode. There's no more assembling this godforsaken thing. Um, you know, it's whatever. Yeah, pick out the worst kit you've ever made, and this was nearly as bad as far as fit. But either way, it looks awesome now. After all the work and effort with clamping and cursing and all that other crap, uh, yeah, it's coming along. So that's it. I'm going to be painting, and I'll maybe show you uh, when I'm doing something cool with the paint. I don't know. BRB. <clears throat> well, okay, we have progress. We've got, and the legs go there, so you don't, eh, don't need to paint all that. We got our highlight coat done. That was a marathon of, I don't know, about four hours of painting. Um, I, I don't work very fast sometimes, though. I just get distracted, or I just need to stand up and stretch. But either way, um, my chiropractic issues aside, here we go. All right doesn't have to be the most beautiful thing. This thing has so many panel lines. I'm never building a plane again. I'll tell you right now. Jeez. Um, so we're going to get some of this uh, Valaho Mecca white gray. We'll get some of that on the kit. And uh, again, that's still an open prize waiting. Um, guess how many of these bottles it'll take to paint this monster. Uh, just the white. Just this color. I'm using other bottles of other stuff for other parts, but I don't care. That's it. Just guess. Put it in preferably the unboxing video. Take your guess there. Uh, if you guess on other videos, then whatever. I'll see if I can dig through them. All right. BRB. Oh, boy. Marathon of painting. Well, we've got the main color down. Look at that. It's not bad. Came out pretty nice. This is the uh, Vallejo uh, White Gray from their Mecca color line. Anyone want to guess how many bottles of that stuff it took to paint the uh, white gray amongst the, the entire the entire model? Take your guess. Win win a Gundam. I mean, it's just that simple for the most part. You know, like, subscribe, follow. Whatever the hell the all the YouTube people have to say these days. Whatever. Um, but you do yes. Please subscribe and like and take your guess how many bottles of paint. Preferably in the unboxing video, but whatever. I'll just I'll take them anywhere. Um, oh man, this 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 Vallejo paint is uh, is definitely a learning curve for me. I'm used to Tamiya paints. Um, used a little Mr. Hobby paints, pretty much the same as Tamiya. As far as not freaking clogging the airbrush, I had to go to Harbor Freight and buy a ultrasonic parts cleaner because this crap it just clogs the crap out of my airbrushes. Now I went and used my cheap airbrush for this because I was doing huge giant parts and it, it was so it was just beyond clogged it was completely hosed I ended up buying a 0.5 needle and nozzle tip and all that 
a .5, and this stuff still just, it just builds up in clogs. And yes, I used the Vallejo Flow Improver and Airbrush Thinner, and at one point I overthinned it, and then it was just like spraying out like water, and then I added more paint to thicken it back up, and I made it through. But it literally, it, it, I had to, I had to just, just take the needle out of the airbrush and just throw the damn thing in the parts washer for five, ten minutes every couple hours of painting. It was, it was, it, whatever, enough complaining. But yeah, just be aware that Vallejo, at least for me, clogs up my stuff. So now I'm masking off. I bought the water slide decal set, and they have yellow decals. Uh, they have all four colors. They have red, yellow, blue, green, whatever. Um, but they don't have these, like, circles here or on the sides of the legs. They don't have the circles. So now I got a mask off and paint. I'm going to use some of that, uh, to me, a lemon yellow. It looks pretty close to the stickers, um, to the to the water slides, I mean, uh, in yellow for, for the Roy Fokker scheme. Um, and if the water slides don't match the to me, a paint, screw it. I'll just mask this thing off also and paint it with lemon yellow and, uh, you know, some regular black. And just have to basically... The extra hundred bucks I spent on the water slide DX decal set out the window. Well, not out the window. All the other <laughs> battery died, but whatever. Um, it, yes, be right back with some yellow on there. Also, okay. See you soon. Well, we're done painting. Finally, finally, figure out how many bottles of white gray Mecca color paint I used. Um, and win a prize, free real grade Gundam kit. Uh, so, you have to like and subscribe though. Yeah, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna make sure. Um, we got, look at the size of this damn missile. This thing's pretty cool. So, nice. Got the, the cockpit. <laughs> he said cockpit. Yeah. You know, we got a decent finish on there. Uh, this, this, this mecha white, uh, mecha paint, oh man. I, I just, I, I've never used it before, not used a lot of Vallejo, and it jammed my airbrushes up so bad I had to buy an ultrasonic parts cleaner. Um, yeah, there's that. That's what the, uh, the big fast pack parts attach to on the top. You got our missile pod. Very nice. Not bad. Oh, we got the big dog right there. Combination of metallic silver gray and uh, the dark iron and uh, whatever the hell this is. Navy blue from uh, Navy blue? Navy blue from uh, da, 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 Mr. Hobby. There we go. It's just massive. Massive, ginormous, huge thing. So uh, one of my fluorescents went out of overhead so the lighting's a little crappy right now. Um, but you know, electricians ain't cheap. Neither are light fixtures and we spent all our money on this. And some other fun things. Yes, yes, many fun things. Don't want to see that coming at you. Okay, well either way, we're stuck gonna not bullshit anymore. Uh, we got our water slides. I hope they go on easy. I brought out the big guns for this. They won in the, uh, decal setter softener shootout with uh, some dude on on, on YouTube that makes way longer, more diatribe written videos than I do. Surprisingly, I don't know how that's even freaking possible. Either way, we got that. Stop dinging, phone. Okay. Um, that being said, I gotta paint all these little uh, clear bits. Gotta get these all painted. I'm gonna paint them in their proper color. And then I'm gonna go over that color with just some regular silver chrome to really make them pop. And we're gonna get those glued on and we're gonna do water slides and we will be back with with much more progress um after the water slides are done oh wait oh wait yes i have to uh, yeah i have to wait until we dull coat this whole thing before i put the lenses in i don't want them to be dull so yeah we're gonna we're gonna paint them up but we're not gonna install them that should be fun okay b our freaking b all right, well, we're doing the water slides. Um, well, the water slides are actually pretty good quality. None of them have been... Oh, well, we have one little... Yeah, whatever, I'm not going to talk about that one. Uh, I was getting into the groove. The first water slide is sacrificial. Uh, whenever you haven't done water slides in, like, a couple months. Either way, here's the good news. If you buy the DX decals, uh, made in Japan. I was wondering, I'm like, wow, these are... These, these water slides seem like a way higher 
caliber quality than the kit itself. Um, yeah, Japanese water slides are very nice. They're massive. They are massive. And if you're going to tear a water slide, it's going to be when it's a big, giant mamma jamma. Um, I got my Yeti down here with hot water from the Keurig. Ah, uh -huh, enough brand words yet? Yeah, product placement, I wish. Um, we're giving this, these things the best chance of settling in. There's some major grooves. Um, we're doing the Marks, Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer. I used to just use the Tamiya, um, you know, uh, whatever it was, you know, the decal solution, extra strong. I was using that for a while. It likes to eat the decal sometimes, and it, uh, and you know what? I, I, I watched a shootout. A shootout! It was a shootout happening on some YouTube channel, and he was testing all the different solutions and the clear winner, I mean, objectively, first place was this stuff. So good. Um, on Amazon, pretty easy to find. Oh, God, okay, okay, I'm crapping my pants. I'm doing water slides on camera. This is not, let's see if she moves. Yep, she's ready to move. Okie dokie. Yeah, that's a, that's a big sucker. All right, let her lay down. And then we're going to just... Gingerly. Upsy daisy. Upsy daisy. A little bit. There we go. Well, okay. Um, time for Mr. Mark Softer. We want to zoom in a little here. There we go. A lot of Mr. Mark Softer. That's all I can say. Just douse it. And, and we're going to have to go back. I'm, I'm doing this in stages. These water slides are so freaking massive. I want to get them in all the grooves and the panel lines and the rivets. But, man, I'm like, I'm ready to load this Mr. Mark Softer into my airbrush. And just, oh, I wonder if that's a thing. Can we do that? Um, just, I'm, I'm just dousing it on here. And I'm going back. I'm letting these sit for a little while. And then going back five minutes later, ten minutes later, and hitting it with more so Mark Softer, and also tamping it down with a large soft bristle brush, because damn, these are massive. I really should have just painted this stripey thingy on here. How's it looking? Lining up pretty nice. I mean, honestly, this is fairly hidden by the fast packs. So there we go. And you just leave it alone. Just leave it. Like, sort of. I'm not going to... I'm adding more, adding more. We're going to put a little more here. A little more here. We're just constantly... Just keep applying it. If this was the Tamiya um, decal solution, the strong, especially the extra strong, it might have chewed through the decal. I've had that happen. But either way, I mean... Oh, Mr. Hobby, man, this model's the first time for me using any Mr. Hobby paints or decal solutions or anything. So far, I'm pretty damn impressed. Coming out, coming out nicely. Now you can see it's all wet, but it's starting to, that's the first one I did before filming, and it's starting to settle in to the panel lines and the rivets. Um, but this is a, uh, oh. This is a labor of, of love and patience here. Kind of like being married to me. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be back with some more water slide goodness. Beer be... Deckles! Deckles! We love deckles! We hate deckles. Deckles are a pain in the ass. Deckles are the only thing between me and victory right now. And I'm pretty... Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay with the water slides. So, here's a, here's, a, here's a money shot. They're big, big water slides. Um... They're, they're nice, made in Japan. We got all our little warnings. There we go. I mean, obviously we gotta, we're gonna do a clear over these uh, before we start doing any kind of weathering effects. There we go, Skull Squadron. Roy Focker reporting for duty. Hey ladies, oh yeah. <laughs> that movie really, I mean, oh boy. That would, I don't know if that would, well, it's it's, anime so they don't give they don't give a crap about about the pc police 
But yeah, these are nice. These, this is painted. They didn't have a sticker for this. Um, why? I don't know. The decal set was weird. The DX decal set, it has like almost all the decals for almost every variation of this model. Yet the photo shows the Super, uh, but then you got the, Ger the, the Gerwalk right there. So it's got stickers for the Gerwalk. It's got stickers for the Super. I'm assuming it has more than enough stickers for the standard Valkyrie. But it doesn't have all of them for any of them, I don't think. It's, 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 it's a little frustrating. Let me go get a wing. Those were scary to do. Okay, this entire thing, one water slide except for the numbers. So it's a whole long water slide with a clear part in the middle. Then you cut out the numbers for the pilot you're doing it for. Because it includes all the stickers for Max and Miria and... Uh, green? Is that Ben Dixon? I don't know. Or the, the equivalent... Uh, you know, and obviously Rick and Roy, it has many, many colors, but yeah, they laid down well. Um, the combo of Mark Setter, which I think this is the magic sauce. This is great, but I don't know if this is all that different from the Tamiya stuff. It's the combination of the two. Look at how it needed a little bit of prodding with a paintbrush and a little extra Mark Setter, uh, Mark Softer, but it really really laid down into the panel lines. Look at that. Laid down there. I mean, nearly as good as painting it. So the DX decals, wait, 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 careful. Two damn thumbs up. DX decals are friggin' awesome. They hold together when you're yanking the blue paper out from underneath those super long things. You're like waiting for it to just shred in your hands. Held up fine. I, I broke a couple of them a little bit. But I was over manipulating them with the brush and the Q-tip to try to really... I, that was my fault. And it's just little tiny accidents, but I'm going to fix those. Um, overall, great work. I think we're going to end this video after a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of the decals on this side of the cockpit. So we're going to have a little name right there. We cut out some of the masking tape around the window canopy. Window canopy. Jesus, Ian. English! Do you speak it, mother? Exactly. Um, we're going to do all the little decals on this side. We're not going to do them on both sides at the same time, because I like to you know, lay it down on one side to whatever. We'll get all those done so you can see the money shot of the, you know, the, the, the front cockpit and nose section with all of its decals on. And then that's it for part two. And, and we are announcing... Well, I'll announce the winner. I'm going to look at my YouTube comments... I'm going to double check you guys are subscribed, but I'm going to look at my YouTube comments and the guesses for the paint from the unboxing. Someone's going to win a real grade Gundam kit. And I am going to show you what that kit is right now. One sec. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Whoever wins is going to get the real grade Crossbone Gundam X1. This is nice. And it's from 2019. So it doesn't have early real grade syndrome. So there we go. Oh, a little dusty. Oh, I'm gonna, I'll dust it off before I pack it to ship it. But it's, it's sealed brand new in the box. And I got it because I am a compulsive shopper. And it looked cool. But then I was I built another real grade and... I, they, I don't know. I just stick with the master grades and perfect grades now. So, honestly, I kind of bought this just to give away as a present or a prize. So, that's what we're doing with it. So, whoever wins, we're going to announce it at the end of this video. All right. So, you know, now you're going to fast forward. Luckily, I made a whole bunch of video before this. To, and I'm going to uh, I'm gonna check you in the, in the descriptions. We're like, got to watch the whole video to know who wins. I didn't put it at the end. I didn't put it in the beginning. I didn't put it in the middle. It's somewhere. And I lied. It's going to be near the end. But not the total end, because we still got decals. All right. Be right back. All right, everybody. Um, so just, just to show you, here's all the little decals, okay, on the cockpit. We got a little little warning sticker there. We got that there. Uh, ignore that. That's a little boogered. Uh, Roy Fokker. And we got a little, little Skull Squadron. So... <clears throat> In honor of the Skull Squadron and... Oh, be right back. 
We're announcing the winner, who I will contact via uh, YouTube, I'm assuming, to get his shipping address. And he, Monster Zack Zack. Um, I look at your other subscriptions. Yeah, you. it's an old code, but it checks out. You, Yeah, you like toys, clearly. So you're getting the real grade Crossbone Gundam X1. We, I put comments in, in vi other videos, like part one, there's comments about, you know, winning the high grade. I'll, I'll pick something out of the pile of my backlog. Um, something cool, probably, or cheap, or whatever. Yeah, high grade that time. Uh, can't give away real grades every single video because I'd go poor. Uh, I wouldn't have any money to buy things to build on the channel. But we're not a sponsored channel, but I feel like doing something nice. And, uh, yeah, Monster Frickin' Zack Zack, okay? Awesome. So people were guessing, and some of you guys weren't super far off. You were like nine bottles, eight bottles, this, that. One person, um, they said five bottles, and they were very close without going over. Um, and then another person said six bottles bottles and I'm like ooh, oh yeah how many bottles did I actually empty to paint this thing but Monster Zack Zack guessed five and a half bottles 5.5 bottles and this is exactly how many bottles we emptied out for this kit it was ah yeah six bottles one's on the floor and we had a little bit of leftover thinned out paint and that literally is about a half a bottle right there left in here um, for touch-ups if we need. So, Monster Zack Zack guessed correctly. Five and a half bottles. Congratulations, Monster Zack Zack. You are the proud new, soon-to-be owner of a Crossbone Gundam X1 real grade. Oh, it's cool. Look, it's got the cape. The, these, the real grades are, are just, they're sick models. I got, like, a real grade production color Zagat coming in from Premium Bandai soon. I, I built the master grade real grade. Not master, master grades of Gok. Um, but yeah, no, real grades, I don't I do not do a ton of real grades. Uh, I, like I said, I usually stick with master grades moving forward. Uh, unless it's like Thunderbolt or Origins. I can't, I can't resist those high grades because they're awesome. Either way, um, cockpit, uh, this side is done. Got to wait for all these to dry up solid. Because uh, when I flip it over, I don't want to booger up any of our existing work. Um, but this is coming along nicely. I did some other stickers while I was waiting for this to sort of set up. Either way, this is the end of part two. Uh, part three will be... <sighs> the last of the water slides will be done. I'm going to give a quick, you know, quick coat of flat gl gloss or, you know, whatever clear over the decals to protect them. And then I'm going to do some, uh, some panel lining wash, most likely. Unless it looks just so awesome that I don't want to touch anymore, but probably going to do some panel lining wash. Then we got to put in all the little colored clear lenses um, after we flat coat or matte coat the entire model. So, like, yeah. <laughs> How many cans of these did I use? Oh, bonus. I mean, really, there's so many. I used so freaking many cans of this $13 a bottle or whatever it is, Mr. Super Clear. Over decals. Oh, by the way, pro tip. 90% of people already stopped watching. I don't recommend using Tamiya uh, clear coat over decals, water slides. I've had it eat decals, decals in the past. Uh, it's not always decal friendly for water slides. For whatever reason, Tamiya uh, is beyond reproach, except their damn clear coat eats their own decals. Uh, I learned that lesson the hard way on a very expensive uh, full option tank. So I'm going to use testers over my decals. I don't know why it tester seems to never screw with the decals. It's fine. It's compatible to me and Mr. Hobby clears. It doesn't care. We're going to use the testers um, over that. I've got yeah se semi gloss. That's fine for doing panel lining. So we're going to semi gloss clear over the decal areas. And yeah, that's that's where we're at. So yeah, there we go. Uh, congrats, Monster Zack Zack. I'm very sorry, everybody else. You had very close guesses. But the son of a bitch was so friggin' close. I mean, five and a half bottles. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah, that's definitely the best answer. It's it's so accurate. I mean, there's, there's literally, you know, maybe like eight milliliters of paint in there, maybe nine, and like, you know, thinner and flow improver. So it's like half a bottle. Good job, Monster Zack Zack. Good job. Um, I also ordered an entire other pack 
of six bottles of this white gray Mecca of Vallejo. I, it was like the last, they came into stock and then they were gone. This is the last six bottles that were in stock in an American hobby shop on eBay. Um, so yeah, I don't need them. And I honestly hate this paint. I like how it looks. I hate painting it. It clogs all my airbrushes. Probably my fault. But my Tamiya gun airbrush has a .2 nozzle. No friggin' way. I put a .5 nozzle on my cheap master airbrush piece of garbage. It was still problematic. Uh, the wifey's getting me a Madworks .5 millimeter nozzle airbrush for uh, Chris McQuanzah Hanukkah. Um, and I'm gonna, uh, that is gonna be my new uh, workhorse for spraying large areas once it comes in in whenever. Um, yeah. Holy crap! This thing's massive, but I love making progress. This makes me feel good. Once you get those little detail water slides on there, that's the hump, guys, in my opinion, at least. It's so horrible, tedious, boring, mundane work. Um, and it's nerve-wracking because you're like, don't frick up, buck on the water slide, you're breaking the... the yeah, I wrinkled a little bit on this this little red danger red thing. A little, but whatever, you know, it's going to be on a shelf, away, you know, like, look at it from here. It looks perfect. And you look at it from here, and you can see it's a little boogered. It's okay. No one's perfect. I am quite mediocre. You can be mediocre as well. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.